Jesse's Rules. I am an artist. You're being very cool. Confident. <laughs> very exciting. All things magical. Eat the cake. Just the tip. Yeah, I'm gonna eat this. Hello. Welcome back to Jesse's Rules. I am your host, Jesse Rules. This is my show. Thank you for joining me. I was feeling a little hoppy and weird because Easter just passed. It is springtime. I did mention that in my last episode where I dressed up as Persephone, the goddess of spring and queen of the underworld. This episode, I just was went all in and I wanted to be the ether bunny. Ah, oh, how magical. My family, um, we celebrated the ether bunny, not so much the Easter bunny. My childhood was super warped and a little bit fucked up, which I did not realize until sharing my stories with friends. My big sister, Lindsay, she was always the Easter Bunny, so, like, I knew she was the Easter Bunny, and therefore we had to have something else to believe in. My mom, she liked scare tactics the best. Be terrified, then you'll behave, fuckers. I'm gonna go ahead and remove my ears, though. They're a little heavy. It's fun, and I have a ton of pictures to share already. Uh, today, I have an interview. I'm really, really excited to share it with everybody. I was poking around on the internet, and Kyle Smith, a friend, a musician, posted on social media that he would be doing or considering any podcast, interview, whatever, just reach out. He had a set amount of time, he had a set amount of slots to fill, and I grabbed one. I sent him an email right away, and I said, give me a time, it's mine. I used to have a different podcast, I have mentioned that. I, you know, this is something new, I don't wanna keep going back and revisiting, but this is the beginning. Because I was not overly loud when things were coming apart, not all of my people know what happened, and that's okay. And you know, shit happens. Kyle agreed to do this interview not knowing what show he was interviewing for. I kind of dove in without like reintroducing him because he's my friend and he's known me this whole time. The first time I met Kyle Smith was at an interview set up for my old podcast, A Nameless Production. My business partner at the time reached out, set up this interview I agreed to do it. I said, okay, I dressed up, I showed up, and then she said, P.S., I'm in Arizona, you have to do it by yourself. I had never heard of him, I had never seen him, I did not know his music, and I went, okay, because that's what I do, I'm always down. Fuck it, sure, yeah, I'll Google this motherfucker real quick. Uh, this time I did not have to Google that motherfucker, I have been here the whole time ever since. I have watched him grow and expand. I have watched him work himself sick. I have watched him enjoy traveling coast to coast. I've watched him cross oceans. Him and his team, they're just amazing. It's crazy to see how fast he has grown with his music and the way that he does things. He does things his own way. A lot of the time, when we don't fit into the mold, you know, you get the backlash for it and everything, and any time that comes around, he's just like, fuck you. Nah, fuck you. Or he leans all the way into it. And leaning into it is honestly, I believe, how I got this interview, because there is a video going viral right now of a lady in the UK, or she's British, I'm not sure. I only saw it one time preparing for my interview. And she is ranting about a parking space where she says, do you know who my boyfriend is? He's Kyle Smith. And so his name is trending. And so you know what? Good for fucking you for jumping on it and saying, yeah, you guys want to do it? Let's do this. And so thank you for this interview. It's amazing. It's long and it's silly and it's fun. And I fucking love these guys. I love this. I love these guys. These are my friends. Full support. So one thing about full support so if you're going to go full support, and they are your friends, pay. Pay for the merch, pay for the concert tickets, and I'm always there, and I go to as many as I can. When you want to support your friends, you don't ask favors. The only time, this is a, sh a story that I am willing, absolutely willing to share, the only time I have ever been put on a list for Kyle Smith, somebody else asked for them to put me on the list because I was not going to go. I was too broke and I was like, no, I can't handle it. 
but I also had a date planned for a lunch date planned for that afternoon. I went on a lunch date. I, it was a public daytime date. I met my friends with this guy at a restaurant where my people were. Okay. So safe, safe, safe today. There were some decisions that I made where I fucked up. I left my car at his house. I needed my car. My medication was in my car. I did not plan on being away from my car, okay? I needed to go get my car and go to Bumpin' Uglies and Kyle Smith. Uh, Brandon Hardesty, I absolutely love that guy too. Uh, These two were doing a show together, Southern California, and I was supposed to be there. They had both supported me on my previous show. I was supposed to be there. I went on this lunch date, and the guy went out to the parking lot middle of the date to go get cigarettes or smoke a cigarette. I don't remember what he said. And by cigarette, he meant do ketamine. He meant do ketamine. Um, Cigarettes means ketamine sometimes. So this guy comes back, completely different person. And everybody's just like, Jesse, why did you bring this man? And I'm like, that's not the man that I brought. That's a different guy. I talk to this guy every single day. Every single day. I talk to him at work. I talk to him while I was at the store. He's very polite. He says, please and thank you. He holds the door. I don't know who that guy is. I didn't know who he was because I thought he smoked cigarettes. And instead he did ketamine in the parking lot. You know, bait and switch, man. Instead of taking me back to my car, this man held me against my will in his car on Skid Row in Los Angeles in a building with bars where I couldn't even go downstairs and call an Uber. I was crying in a drug dealer's apartment going, where am I? Who are you people? I don't belong here. Get me the fuck out of here. I'm yelling at this man. He was spinning on a stripper pole. None of these people knew who I was, why I was there. And he literally forgot that I was real and then proceeded to do like a very dramatic movie breakup that you would expect from somebody that you were breaking up with after five or 10 years. And he followed me to my car in his socks and he walked down the street yelling going i can't believe you're doing this to me just come back inside love just come back inside and i was like i do not know this man (laughs) i i have trauma and guilt and i just i don't want to be asking to be put on lists because wow where shit happens and then like you don't show up and dang The one time I was put on a list for Kyle Smith, I didn't use it. So I do apologize for that one, Kyle Smith and Brandon Harsey, because I would have loved to have been at that fucking show. Um, And so, yeah, that is my story about the only time where I asked for the friend handout and then I got fucked over and didn't even get to use it. And so... (laughs) So ever since then, I have kept my mouth shut, and this opportunity, this was the one where I was like, this one I can ask for. This one I can say, please, please. (laughs) And he said yes. I didn't even have to say please like that. (laughs) So please enjoy this interview. It was fun. It was amazing. I fucking love this guy. You know, you can listen to his music, stream it anywhere, but also catch him live because a live show is so much different and just the energy and... You know, you get the whole crew, and it's fucking cool. So enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. What's shaking? What's going down, Jesse Rules? All right, we're good. Jesse, meeting you here. This is my show, Jesse's Rules. So this is not a nameless. This is not nameless production. This is Jesse Rules. Jesse's Rules. Jesse Rules. That's the name of the show. Yep. The Jesse Rules podcast. Yep, Jesse's Rules. Damn. Okay. So it's all me. I started over this year, all brand new. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> I today I'm a man in London or Australia. I can't really tell that. Uh, apparently, I have a girlfriend who's really, really pissed off about a parking spot. And by the time this podcast comes out, nobody will know what I'm talking about. But I had to look it up before I talked to you. So I just saw it for the first time like 10 minutes ago, just because I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I don't get it. It's mostly kids. It's mostly like kids on TikTok. You know what I mean? It's just fucking. There's also a country artist by the name Kyle Smith. Really? Which I found on accident on TikTok looking for you. Really? I thought there was only a a gospel Kyle Smith. I didn't know there was a country Kyle Smith too. 
Um, before I met you, I got a very large white dog, a Great Pyrenees, and I named yeah. him Kyle Schmidt. <laughs> and so when I first met you, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. I accidentally named my dog after this? you before I knew you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? I think you had me take a picture with him once at, at Sea Legs, huh? Yeah, he's a big floof. Kyle Schmidt, he's, yeah. He's an asshole. He is a crazy white boy. Um, He lives up to his name. He jumps. He has jumped off the roof four times now. Off your fucking roof at your house? Yeah. Jesus he Christ. finds windows and just goes for it. So, Savage. okay. First time I ever met you was on my old podcast, A Nameless Production. In Huntington? Yep, at Sea Lakes. And about three years ago. And in those three years, when I first met you and I first interviewed you, you had about 10 people showing up to shows. And now you're selling out. You're going coast to coast. You're fucking flying across oceans. You've gone to Closer to the Sun. You are hitting all the festivals. Like, damn, homie. I have not <laughs> known you that long, and you have fucking soared. You have reached handfuls of goals that you have set for yourself. So first question, what are the goals right now, personal and professional? Holy shit. Damn, that's a good-ass question. I'm glad that you <laughs> told me. Fuck. Uh, so I would say professional goal right now would be finish uh, the next album. Um, I've been working on this shit for like two, three years now, you know? So finish the next album professionally, and then personally... I would say uh, tour less, record more. My body and my state of mind are definitely starting to get heavily affected by our crazy schedule. And I'm starting to feel that I'm fucking 30 now. It does matter. You know, I've always been, my state of mind has always just been like, if you're not fucking dying, you're a fucking machine and go, 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 you know? And, and uh, turns out that's not really how the real world works. And uh, I got to start thinking about my sanity and my health and uh the last two tours were a big fucking eye opener as to how gnarly it can be when you're carrying all your own shit and playing venues where everybody has access to you and and uh just yeah if we're being really personal it gets a little fucking gnarly sometimes when you're going like 25 days in a row you know it ties into one of the questions i already have written down you tour so much and you're very open about coming from addiction okay. and like I don't know that version. I know this version. But the thing about addiction is that it's brain chemistry. And so you have spent 10 years rewiring your brain to focus on your health and your enjoyment of life and your music and your work ethic and being good. You still have that drive that can over focus. And like you said, the last two tours, you worked too hard. How do you keep yourself in check from even overdoing the good things? Because we can do that. Mm, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I never think that there can be too much good and I never think there can be too much work, you know? Maybe that's not a good thing, you know? Maybe maybe that's why I catch myself passing out while I'm carrying bins and shit in and out of venues or fucking dry heaving and puking and doing whatever I can to, to you know, make sure that the show goes on. Um, I relate too much to those statements because I, too, work myself into sickness <laughs> to where I'm like, oh, shit, my body doesn't do that anymore. No. Nope. I thought I was invincible three years ago and now it's starting to fucking now, now, you know, now I'm starting to understand why everybody told me to slow down. Taking the advice, but it also does you a favor when it comes to touring, because then now there's the supply and the demand. If the supply goes down, the demand goes up. Economics Maybe. says it's going to make you fancier. The music, uh, the music industry and staying relevant is staying relevant is, is, is crazy difficult, um, in such a fast paced demanding industry, you know? And, um, if you're not consistently in everybody's face, um, people forget about you in a fucking week, you know what I mean? And, uh, I believe that I know, you know, some, you know, some people will tell me, Oh, no matter what, your people will always be here, you know? And, and, uh, I just, I don't know if I believe that shit. And, and I, I think that, uh, like, I know our diehards will, but like, to continue to stay in everybody's face and continue to be present and constantly, you know, being on tour, making new friends, even if 30 people come to the show, but they invite somebody and then it's 30 people that have never seen us before. It's up to me and my crew to make sure that we're fucking constantly coming back and repeating the cycle. People like uh slightly stupid and bumping uglies and, and, you know, like, uh, People that just tour their motherfucking asses off are the reason why I believe in the formula and it's always just record, release, tour, repeat, you know, and, and uh, Brandon always tells me that record, release, tour, repeat. So 
that's what I'm trying to do right now is record more and tour a little less. Yeah. What is something that you wish more fans knew or appreciated? Something of like the touring life and the music life. Um, I just wish people wouldn't spill their drinks on the merch table. That's all. <laughs> KP wishes that too. That's all I give a fuck about. Just be respectful of our shit and don't fucking spill shit all over my fucking setup. Or my pedals on stage, you know, that's just finding that balance between like, huh, if I say this, people will think that I'm ungrateful or don't want them there. Like, that's not true. Uh, I'm very, very appreciative of every single fucking ticket bot. And I would not be doing this without all of our fucking amazing supporters. But at the same time, if you're going to show up, don't be a dick and don't spill drinks all over my shit. And and uh, or or at least if you spill something on my shit, offer to pay for the hat that you ruined or the shirt that you ruined or the guitar pedal that you ruined, you know? Because usually people spill shit and then dip, and they're like, I gotta get out of here. Yeah, you're breaking you by it. That <laughs> rule still stands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So maybe we just have like a big you break you buy sign, you know, at the, at the merch table. Or you, you spill you buy. I don't know. You wet it, it, you get it. <laughs> I, went on, I went off on a tangent. What was the original question? <laughs> that, I mean, it was a good one. Um, that's pretty much it. I don't really have any, yeah. Yeah, I don't really have any other complaints otherwise. Um, maybe sometimes if I look like I'm dying, just give me a minute. Other than that, that's pretty much it. Can people yeah, bring you water? Uh, yeah, yeah. You know what? Uh, yeah, people always bring me water. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, everybody tries to force me to drink stuff and eat stuff all day because they know that I'm just like fucking this like twenty four seven. You know, so people try to feed me and put water in my mouth all fucking day long. That's nice. <laughs> you know, have some water, eat something, please, before you fucking die. You know, self care, so, bitch. <laughs> yeah. So usually if I don't, somebody will force me to. <laughs> what is the best way we can support you? The best way you can support is sharing my music with a friend. That's how this all fucking goes down is word of mouth. I still think that uh, no matter how much, no matter how much crazy shit you do with social media, no matter what you do on the internet, no matter what the fuck happens, you know, Facebook, Instagram, any of that shit. I still think that the most uh effective form of growth is word of mouth and word on the street and oh have you heard of this fucking you know this guy or this music or this song um i still think that's the most effective thing so the if if anybody watching this is like how the fuck can i support this guy uh tell whoever's sitting next to you about my shit and share a song with them there's an endless amount of people that like our sh like like our style of music or this you know, scene or this genre or whatever, even though I'm a little more out of the box, but, uh, but I think that if it's introduced to enough people that the right ones will like it and it will, you know, ultimately, I mean, my goal is already fucking met, you know, like I'm already, I'm already where I've thought I would never be, you know? So anything yeah. past this is just a bonus. I mean, I have crazy fucking goals and dreams, but, uh, anything past where it is right now is just a bonus, you know? Yeah. That checks out. One thing that you do more than a lot of people is the self-promotion, the stickers, the CDs, the shirts that you just did. That was huge. Talk about it. Uh, that, <laughs> that's, the, <laughs> that's the most expensive shit I've ever done in my life. <laughs> I basically paid like, I basically paid like 2,300 2, people $2 to wear my shirt is bit is what it kind of came out to. So I would say I'm all in like five or six grand expenses. And that's to have 2300 people wearing my shit around at shows and festivals because my goal was to you know, if I did the shipping for $7, I would like break even, you know what I mean, and do like shirts for $0, but at least pay for the postage so that way you know, there's like some where the postage was like $4 and then somewhere it's $9 and then it would yeah. hopefully now, you know. Um, but it ended up being like one person ordering like 12 shirts, you know what I mean? And I had to like, I had to go through them all and be like, Hey dude, the max I can do is three, you know? And, uh, the max I can do is three free shirts. And even at three free shirts, I'm still like losing my fucking ass. You know what I mean? But I know that it'll all come, it'll all come back. And, and the people that, you know, see the name everywhere. I mean, at some point, I think I was just talking about this the other day with Ali at, with the peer, uh, interview, um, at some point, if you keep doing that shit and people keep seeing your name repeatedly over the past five fucking years, they're going to be like, all right, what the fuck is this shit all about? And then maybe they like it. You know? That ties into like you have 2300 walking, talking billboards now. 
Yeah. And each of us have our own style and our own personalities and our own favorite song of yours. And so we have a different way that we introduce your music and a different reason that we share your music. And so that, that just spreads it even wider. And you guys don't stick to a genre. You have a song for everybody. You have the reggae, you have the hip hop, you have the punk and the rock. You have a little bit of all of it. You have love songs, you have angry songs, you have fuck the government songs. What do you want? <laughs> you got it. I love that. <laughs> you even have like a spooky Halloween one. I don't know if that's out yet. That was Patreon. Oh, you can support on Patreon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Patreon. Patreon dash Kyle Smith. It's not even Kyle Smith music. Kyle Smith wasn't taken. Kyle Smith wasn't taken. It was not. Okay. What are your thoughts on being called a band? When we're live, we're a band. You know what I mean? And when we tour, we're a band. Um, When I'm recording, it's 90% of the time just me in here in my bedroom. I think when we're on tour, we're a band. Um, When we are, when the three of us are on stage, it's a band. Um. I wouldn't say backing band. Uh, I, I think the guys all just make the show fucking incredible, you know? Um, but uh, like when I'm at home, when I'm home recording, it's just like me in here with a drum, you know, electronic drum kit and a bass guitar and fucking keys and doing everything here. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know. I would like to say that my name, like how people see it as an artist and not a band, you know what I mean? That's how I would like it to be. Um, but people see us live and just say, oh, the band Kyle Smith, you know what I mean? So it's both. So, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, if you come see us, I mean, it's, uh, I talked a lot with about, you know, who I talked to about it a lot was like Mike Pino or, um, you know, other, other solo artists, like you see Jack Johnson or, um, you know, anybody that's just like recording and doing shit in the studio by themselves. Um, they just use their name, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's when you go see Jack Johnson at a show, it's not Jack Johnson and the blank, you know? Yeah. I figured I didn't really want to fuck with Spotify. If it's not broken, don't fix it. You know what I mean? Everybody already knows the fucking name. Um, The guys are very, very respectful and very gracious about me maintaining creative control and fucking letting me, they trust my fucking, they trust whatever it is. They trust the vision, you know? So I know that if I have an idea for a song and I record the whole thing here that, like, I'm not really going to get any pushback. It's just going to be like, like, cool. Like we trust whatever the fuck you want to do. And I'm very, very grateful for that. Luckily I have two very, very down to earth humans that are super fucking awesome and and respect, you know, what I'm trying to do, um, which could make me the asshole to some. And I don't really give a fuck, but I've always, I've had a few mentors and a few people that I've discussed uh, about it with that are just like, dude, you, like just keep doing what you're doing, maintain the creative control, record the songs, you know what I mean? Do it how you fucking want it because it's working right now. Um, and I haven't had any reason to change it. So thank so, you, Scott and Chris, for letting me do whatever the fuck I want to do and get weird in here. <laughs> they are magical. I fucking love they're those amazing. guys. Yep. But but when you but when you see the live show, it's like there's so much there's so much added shit that's not on the records that yes. they, that's why when when you know when we play as as a, a three piece it's like there's these all these new parts that we've never fucking recorded that are like in the live set. We play everything way fucking faster and completely fucking different, especially with like Jaded and and uh, Dope Fiend and like shit like yes. that. The, the whole first album, I hired a bunch of cats to play. That was before I even met Chris and Scotty, that whole first record. You know what I mean? So I hired a bunch of studio musicians to like, you know, do this, do this, do this. And I'm like in the window, like telling everybody what I want through the microphone. And that's how that turned out. And then I brought it to them when I met those guys. And uh, now we just play everything completely fucking differently live. Will we get a live record? Uh, Maybe one day, like when we do it big, you know, Um, we we have the live at Kona Town sessions on YouTube, which is super dope. Those were cool. That's probably like the closest thing I'm going to have to a live record like anytime soon, because uh, those Kona Town sessions were dope. They came out really fucking cool. I'll mix and mastered and professional video and everything. So um, I got to keep pumping those out. We've been sitting on 20 more of those after we dropped the first two, you know, Um, that's cool. Yeah, it's just a matter of bandwidth and just having the fucking time to be consistent and disciplined and continue to be on all the photographers and engineers. And it's like so much to fucking pull teeth from everybody. Like, I need this video. I need this audio. Can you have this song fucking mastered by then around everything else that I have going on? It's just like fucking insane. You know, there's like (laughs) it's about 200 jobs. Musician is not playing music. Musician is businessman. It's social media manager mover mechanic fucking yeah triple a fucking driver fucking 
you know what I mean? Uh, all the shit that I never thought that, that I would learn I, I've had to do, you know? <laughs> Even like planning the travel, like. That's Scott. Scotty's good at that. Scotty, oh, yes? Yeah, Scotty handles all of our lodging. Scotty is the guy that's like, well, if we go stay in this town after the show, we will have a two hour and 45 minute drive to the next town on this day. So if we leave by 1 p.m., him and Sean, my new tour manager, are like on it with that shit. So I'm basically like, I don't know where the fuck we're going. I'm sitting in the back seat now. That's nice. That's a nice yeah. person to have. Time, I'm like, where, who, <laughs> like, where are we going tonight? <laughs> got, it, got it. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very grateful because I'm, yep. Yep. I would not be able to handle that shit on my own fuck no i used to try and then i was just like dude i gotta give everybody a piece of the fucking pie man you know any songs written or any songs coming from christopher or scotty's perspective or like things that they have gone through are they all mostly just from you because you guys are together and you guys are a family and you guys experience all these things together like i mean anything that i write is super personal you know I like to think that everything that I write is just from from the heart and from personal experience, you know, so I can't really say like how another situation makes either of them feel or anything, you know, and I don't understand where, you know, I don't understand. That's basically it. I don't understand how they feel, about <laughs> it, you know, so I, yeah. I, I, I try to write from, you know, this is how I felt. And this is how I can translate it into a song. And I guess I can't really do that with somebody else, you know. So I would like, I think I would have a very, very hard time like writing for someone else or vice versa, letting somebody write some shit for me. I just, I can't fucking do it. You know, I've, I've, the only time I ever did that was on the last Ballyhoo record when Howie asked me to uh, be on the, on the Ballyhoo album. He just said, Hey man, I have this chorus that I really want you to sing. And it was like some shit that I could do, you know? So, so that chorus in just business on the Ballyhoo record was all Howie. Uh, it was all Howie's lyrics. He just asked me to sing it. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. But other than that, it's hard for me to sing things that I can't relate to, you know? Like the brat side of me, that's just like, you know, you got the evil shoulder. Um, That just made me go, oh, so I need to be extra weird to you, just progressively weirder until I end up in one of your songs. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. <laughs> you get crazy enough. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Start singing about a banana. You know, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Because <laughs> that must be a weird feeling being like, oh, shit, that was me. I don't I, I, I keep things pretty broad, you know, target like any I, I try to any any time I'm like writing about a specific like situation or very rarely do I write about a specific person. But I just try to make sure that whatever I'm writing, I keep it super vague and that it could be referring to like, uh, no time. My song, no time is like, you could be talking about drugs. You could be talking about a girlfriend. Like it could be about anything, you know? And like, Where same the fans with, can take it as they need it. Yeah. Yeah. Same I like with that. It. And I, I don't, yeah, I, I like to, I like to try to keep uh very, very specific situations out of the mix and just put everything as broad and generalized as possible so that more people can be like, Hey, I can apply that to, you know, uh, me not being able to stay away from this chick or me not being able to stop drinking or me not being able to fucking stay away from the drugs. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. That's cool. That's respectable. Yeah. I just try not to be too specific about shit, you know, and same thing. I think I learned, I think I learned that from like going to meetings and shit, you know what I mean? Like the whole recovery thing and, and not sharing about specific drugs because it kind of disconnects you from like newer people, you know? It's like if you have somebody that comes in for like doing, you know, pills, but you're talking about like, oh, I used to slam fucking heroin. You know what I mean? Like they can't relate to that. So I I, I think I try to do the same. I never really thought about it that way till right the second. But I think I try to do the same thing in my music is just try to make things as relatable as possible. You know, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a nice way to share what you learn from every experience. And that's really what music is. It's like you experience life. But that's our way. Not my way, but art. Art is the way of reflecting it back. Like some people can speak, some people can write, some people can sing. There's always a way that we give what we learn back to the world. And music is fucking magical. It's nice that it's available to more people because there are artists that I can't specifically relate to because the songs are so on point. I'm like, I never went through that shit. That yeah. song's not for me. <laughs> yeah. Just trying to keep things short and sweet and simple and Broad helps with that. <laughs> or in sweet and simple broads. So on tour, what is the best thing that you've gotten to do on tour? The coolest experience on tour? Yeah. What is the one that blew your mind? 
that changed your perspective where you're like, fuck, this is my life. And thank you. Damn, that's heavy. Uh, I think when we, uh, I think when we opened for Slightly Stupid in, in Vegas at Reggae Rise Up, because Stupid's been one of my favorite bands since I was 13 years old, you know, and uh, to load in all of our shit next to their shit and like to see all of my amps and everything next to like the Stupid Skull spray painted amp cases and everything. That was dope. Or, or when we played Cali Vibes last time and uh, we loaded all our shit in next to Cypress Hills, that was pretty tight. Um, it's mostly just situations like that where I'm like looking at a bill and it's like, okay, like Snoop Dogg, Cypress Hill, a few bands, Kyle Smith. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like tripping the fuck out. Uh, yeah, I, th- I think to be honest, when I got that call, when I was at closer to the sun, 2022, uh, it was December and I got the call that we were going to be doing Cali vibes in 2023. And the agent said, uh, we're going to be adding Snoop Dogg. Uh, Cypress Hill, Modest Yahoo, and you guys. And I was like, what the fuck is happening? You know? So yeah, that was a, that was a pretty crazy moment. Cause uh, we're, I don't know. I don't know what it is, man. Like, like I don't have, I don't have the streams. I don't have the numbers. I don't have the fucking, you know, I don't have the plays like everybody does. I mean, I guess maybe I have like some following on social media or whatever, but that doesn't mean like my music's fucking, you know, it doesn't mean like my music's phenomenal or anything. You know what I mean? It just means I talk a lot of shit, you know? So to, to get that call and to ha- be added to be one of the four artists added, it was like Snoop, Cypress and fucking modest Yahoo. And then us, I was like, that was like, I think I put the phone down and I fucking cried at the fucking pool in Mexico. And I was just like, what the fuck is happening right now? You know? So yeah, I have moments like that where I fucking cry. Uh, another one was, when we opened for the movement at the house of blues in Boston, when, when we were on tour with the movement, that was super dope. When we opened at the, uh, the house of blues, Boston and the seats in that motherfucker, it's like a 2300 cap venue. And it's just like, you're on stage and you're just like looking at like stadium seats, like going all the way to the fucking roof of the venue. And you're just like, this is fucking crazy, bro. Like I could drop a pin on the stage and hear it just up the whole fucking, you know what I mean? That's cool. So, uh, yeah, that was really cool. Um, I think, yeah, I think like opening for Stupid, uh, playing with the movement at, at House of Blues Boston, huge venue, biggest indoor venue we've ever played. And then um, uh, what was the other one? Uh, getting that phone call that we were going to be added to Cali Vibes, I think were the biggest three things. I've seen you at Sea Legs. I've seen you at Festivals. Sea Legs. I've seen you in pizza places. I've yep. seen you on massive stages. I've seen you do big shows and small shows. And, you know, everything you're doing, it is fucking working. And it's so. beautiful. And everybody's so happy. And you do make a little bit of everything for everyone. And it's fucking cool. I have my favorites. And even my kids have their own favorites. The one you just wrote for your parents, for your mom. Yeah what we had yeah yes what we had uh my kids sing that one all the time and yeah you know, i went through a divorce and we had a couple weird years and I have a chronic illness that song is special to them in a way that i don't even understand so, so cool. like that's a whole different generation that you already have on your team and that's just fucking cool and magical and i appreciate it on a level as a fan and a friend and a mom so that means a lot thank you <laughs> uh what else we got did we uh did we cover uh, almost everything? I would like to talk about Gushers. Gushers! <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> Fuck, dude, who told you? Um, I could eat a thousand. Okay, so... I could eat a thousand Gushers. I love Gushers. <laughs> oh, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> there has been something that I saw you eat one time. I have never seen it in real life. I have never seen you talk about it ever since, but sometimes I see things and i never forget them Ugh. okay and it me. was gushers with tahine Ugh, fuck all right so i'm gonna tell you some super top secret information this is some crazy shit nobody else knows about this right <laughs> <laughs> so i have a buddy uh in uh, santa cruz he runs a company called royal waves and royal waves is he takes like uh you know gummy worms peach gummies he makes them all super like douse them in fucking uh uh chamoy and tahine and all that shit 
what he does is he takes those gushers, he covers them in chamoy and he lets them like sit and then he covers them in tahin. And it's like the most fucking ridiculous, bombest, dankest shit I've ever had in my life. And um, there's like three things in the world that I will eat until I throw up. And that is one of them. <laughs> okay. So I saw that tub. Yep. And that's been in my head since the one time you posted it. And I want to eat that until I throw up. <laughs> Royal Waves. He fuck. Uh, he does. He does online ordering. So yeah. Shout out to the homie. It's uh, if you look, if you do the Googles, Royal Waves uh sc you'll 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 find it and all the candy and everything that he makes is on there and he ships and it's fucking uh, it's ridiculous so he actually i asked him to meet us at the venue <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I asked him to meet him at the venue i was like how much shit can you bring me for a hundred dollars and this full fucking brought like like two big grocery bags like i think there was like six tubs in each so each tub ha- you know each tub's like about this big there's like they're about that tall. So he brought like 12, he brought me 24 tubs for a hundred dollars. And I think me and all the drifting roots guys and all the, uh, uh, Pacific grown crew out of Santa Cruz, we all fucking, uh, we mashed on like almost all of them in the green room that night. And that's what you saw the video of. That's magical. It, it left an impression. <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's got cool art and he fucking, he make you know, he's, he's got a good little business going on and, and, uh, I love when people fucking start their own businesses and everybody has their own little side hustle and it's a lot of work and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that it, it stuck. <laughs> and now we're talking about it fucking four months later. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> I, I've thought about it a lot. And every time I look at my gushers and I'm like, I know it's not just pouring tahini on them. <laughs> no. So uh, yeah, you just, just buy them. Just trust me. If you can't, I'll send them to you. <laughs> I will get some. Now that I know where to get them, I'm going to get some. <laughs> You just did a sale on your merch and you hinted that you have new artwork coming. How do you decide? How do I decide? Yeah. How Um, do you pick art and artists and the vibe and what the fuck? uh, What's very, very important to me is deadlines and times. Um, That's like the most important thing is if I hit somebody up, it's can we have this done within fucking, you know, two weeks or whatever, you know, especially when it comes to tour art, when it comes to flyers, posters, um, tour announcements, shit like that. I am emphatic and fucking psychotic about deadlines. And if you, you know. I mean, there's a few exceptions I'll make, like obviously like some really, really big artists that I am lucky enough to work with that, you know. It's like, sure, man, whenever you're finished, you know what I mean? But for the most part, if I'm hiring like a lot of like uh, more, you know, smaller graphic designers, um, you know, I'll I'll usually try to have deadlines for shit because if I don't do that, I'll forget all about it and nothing will ever happen, you know? So um, the the main thing really, to be honest, that makes me choose artists is seeing like other tour posters. And I'm like, who the fuck did that? You know what I mean? Uh, That towel that you have, that towel that you have behind there, Jimbo Phillips. So he did a dope ass fucking flyer for the expendables like 10 years ago. And I, I remembered it cause it was a great white shark. It was an expendables hometown show in Santa Cruz. And it was a great white shark flying out of the water with a bunch of broken guitars and drums and shit. Like he's like smashing on all the instruments. And I was like, that's one of the dopest fucking shits I've ever seen in my life. And, uh, so I hit him up, you know, eight years later, I fucking DM him and I'm like, Hey man, I'm starting to make shirts and shit. And he was down. So, uh, I think catching everybody during COVID when, when everybody, when the world kind of stopped for a while, kind of helped me in a way, you know, and I kind of had a chance to work with a lot of people that I probably wouldn't be able to now, you know? Yeah. Um, and you know, fat lip from the far side, like a lot of people that were just laying low and not really doing anything that, that, you know, I was selling merch and they were kind of hurting from not being able to perform from what I'm guessing, you know, not to, not to say where anybody else is at, but like, it was, it was a fuck time for musicians, you know, yeah. it was a fuck time for artists period, you know? Yeah. So, uh, so luckily I was in a, a decent enough position where I was working in the medical industry at the time. I had a little bit of money because I wasn't on gas every weekend to go play shows for $0 at the time, you know? Um, so I started putting that towards merch and uh future shit, you know, recording. I bought all my own recording shit and, uh, so yeah, when it comes to graphic designers, I uh I just I like the crazy skate punk fucking 
I like the punk rock shit, you know, and uh, I really, really like the crazy eyeballs and tongue flailing out of the mouth, fucking skull guys and shit like that, you know, and I'm just now getting to the point to where I'm starting to like, you know, not everybody likes skulls, not everybody likes fucking, not everybody likes shirts that say fuck, not everybody likes needles, not everybody, (laughs) you know what I mean? (laughs) Um, Not everybody likes uh, perilous situations on fucking on their t-shirt, you know, so uh yeah, so I've kind of I've I've been working with a few cats and doing more like mellow designs, like some ladies stuff and some floral stuff and things like that, just to kind of give everybody what they want, you know. That's cool. Yeah, it reminds me of Joe Dirt, you know, where he's like, "Snakes and sparklers are the only ones I like," and he's like, "It's not about you, it's the consumer." And <laughs> about that scene, every time I design a shirt that I don't like. <laughs> Snakes and sparklers, man. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I design a shirt where I'm like, eh, this looks too like fucking like PG, you know? And then I'm like, I hear that in the back of my head. Like everybody's been asking you for flower stuff or things without skulls or fuck on it, you know? So I'm trying yeah. really, really hard to make things that aren't black with skulls. Because <laughs> it's not your wardrobe. You got 10 year olds no. trying to rep your shit. So exactly, exactly. Checks out. Yeah. That, it's nice that you listen and you acknowledge it though. Cause like you give your fans back what they give you and like, you're there for it. And it'd be stupid cool. if I didn't. <laughs> Cause you've grown a shit ton. Like, like I said, it's been amazing to watch. It's also really nice and humbling that you still include all of us in it. Like we've seen you go from little to massive and you're still the same guy and it's lovely. I'm glad you think things are massive now. I appreciate that. (laughs) Maybe we're getting to that point to where we're like in the scene now or like incorporated, you know? Which scene? Now it's like everything. Now it's like you go to Cali Roots Fest, you'll see fucking hip hop. You'll see fucking ska punk. You'll see the Interrupters and Ice Cube on the same fucking lineup, which I think is amazing and fucking dope. And I love that, like, you know... I don't want to make shit that just sounds all the same. You know, there's, there's, I would never show throw shade in another band. I think anybody going after their dreams is amazing, but there are a lot of repetitive fucking chord progressions and fucking and melodies. And, and there's so many fucking people like after, after slightly stupid and uh, pepper and, and stick figure and everybody like really like blew the fuck up. There's just so many people trying to do the exact same fucking thing. I mean, everybody can agree with me. If you think that I'm an asshole, then fucking, I I don't know what to tell you, but there are a lot of people that have the exact same sound and want to, you know, do the exact same thing. I forget what the fuck brought me on this tangent right now, but um, I see us as just barely starting to break into our, our small little scene. You know, that's, that's how I picture it. I see it in growth. Like I understand where you're coming from with the, the availability. And I mean, I know Red Rocks is still a goal. I Fuck know. Yeah, it is. Hell yeah. But I know that that one's going to happen and I want to fucking be there. It could. <laughs> I mean, we already saw all the other shit happen. And so you can't do all of the shit at the same time. And so if you've already reached all the other goals, you know, you put Everything one else. goal in your head and you take a day at a time and yeah. fucking get it. Everything else I thought was never possible has happened. So why the fuck not? You know, we are meat sex with electricity. We can do whatever we want. <laughs> yeah. Pretty it's fucking pretty, pretty dope meat sack. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. I've never heard that. Meat sacks with electricity. I guess in a way. Yeah, you ain't wrong. That is some shit you would say. <laughs> <laughs> I know I started off this way, but I appreciate you doing this for me so much because me too. I switched my career this year. I started over brand new. I started from the bottom. Sometimes we have to just move on and start over and do it in our own name. Uh, that's one of the things I appreciate how you still do it in your own name, because I was very good at working for other people's names this year. I needed to do it for my own name and I had a show called nameless, but everybody knew my name. And so I was like, well, shit, I need to just own my name and live it up and just do it. And like you said, like do the things that I never even imagined I could do because all of those things are still a possibility, even if we don't imagine them. Fuck yeah. I thought just being, I thought just not having warrants was like a miracle, like fucking 10 years ago. You know what I mean? I was like, no way. I was like, I can go get an ID. That's crazy. You know what I mean? (laughs) So uh, yeah. Yeah. Just the fact that I could like go to court and like leave out of the same door that I walked in was like fucking nuts, you know? So 
yeah, I'm very, very grateful for anything else. Like I said, anything else that happens is a fucking bonus, you know? So yeah, we're very lucky. We're very lucky that things have been trending in a positive direction. And there's, there's a lot of things that can happen on this fucking, on this journey. And, uh, you know, I'm just fortunate to have two guys that are a whole fucking team that is just down for it and down to sacrifice their whole fucking world to come on tour. That's, you know, that's the hardest part is just finding people that are down and, and really want to fucking do it for life, you know? The sacrifice, that's one of the things earlier I mentioned. What is something you wish more fans knew? I wish more fans knew about the sacrifices you guys make to go do shows and tours and everything for us. Because that's yeah. what it's for. It's for us. Yes, it's for you. You want to make money. You want to be successful. You want to play shows. But, I mean, people can get a show at a local place and play every single night and have a consistent musical gig. That's not yeah. specifically the goal. You make it so that you guys sacrifice so that we can have what you give. I mean, it is, you know, it is a long term goal. You know, every every time we're we're going on tour, it's like, all right. This month, we're going to hug another thousand people and make a positive impact, you know, and, and whether that means we're getting paid or not. I mean, I really, really stopped paying attention to that shit like a year ago, you know, um, I was backstage with Slightly Stupid at their uh, their last tour with Atmosphere and shit. Right. And I woke up to Kyle and I was like, hey, man, I was like, <laughs> I was like, we were at the five point amphitheater. Right. And it's like sold the fuck out. You know what I mean? Like 10,000 people there were at five point. <laughs> and I see Kyle and I'm like, Hey man, I was like, I'm guessing you guys have been like crushing this tour. Ticket sales have been really good and everything. And he goes like this and he looks out and he goes like that to like, try to look at like the fucking filled out stands and everything. And he's like, he goes like that. And then he's like, I don't give a fuck about that shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, and ever since then, man, ever since he told me that he was like, he literally told me like, I don't do anything for money. You know what I mean? And, and it's easy to say when you're like, you're comfortable, but but to really like just do to focus on, I want to do this because it is the next right indicated step. And because it is what I think I should be doing versus how much money are we going to get? You know what I mean? Oh yeah. When I made that shift, when I made that fucking shift is just like, do this because it is the right thing to do versus what are they paying us? You know what I mean? Or what's, you know, you know I'll, I'll, obviously I'll still ask what's the deal. You know what I mean? Like when we're, if Tim calls me and he's like, Hey, I have this venue, but they're only giving you guys this. I'm like, fuck, we're going to kind of take a big old dick in the face, but we'll be able to play in a new town for people that have never fucking seen us before. That will make them very, very happy, you know? And yeah, that's kind of how it is. Like when we're hitting like a lot of these really small towns or like places out in the Midwest that like never really get to see us that much because we always have some big festival where there's a huge radius clause and we can't play any other shows around that because of the legal bind that people don't understand. And they just think, Oh, you know, you're fucking, you're doing fucking Everwild, but you're not coming to Cleveland. You fucking dick. You know what I mean? It's like, I, I always to, wondered about the I bouncing cannot. back and forth. That I never made sense to me. I was like, why would they go here? Then there, then back. It's yeah. Cause you have to go that far away to play. Yep. There's this amazing thing in the industry called a radius clause where if you accept the deal for that festival, you cannot play 180 miles around it for people that break those. I mean, you're not legally uh, uh, legally required to uh, stay around, you know, do that. You can technically do whatever the fuck you want, but people that bands that tend to break those usually don't really they burn bridges very, very quickly. You know, yeah, and I, me and Tim are trying to stay in everybody's good graces. And if we say that we're going to do something, we fucking do it. And if we say we're not going to do something, we don't do it, you know? So if we take this gig and it says you cannot play, you know, anywhere within a 200 miles of fucking, uh, you know, Ohio for fucking six months, I'm going to do it. You know what I mean? And if that means everybody being pissed off that we only played it ever wild, then that's fine. It's, it's weird how every venue, every festival, every job you guys take has different rules and mm -hmm different requirements and you guys have to adjust it with every single show to match it <laughs> Thing, things that nobody would even understand you know you know that's why not everybody gets to do it and that's why not everybody is successful about it and like that's why in my head you're bigger than you are as you present yourself because you're willing to do the work and you still plan to do the work so i can already see the progression i've seen how it's grown from three years ago to now. And so in the next three years, if it stays steady, like that's amazing. I would like to see exponential growth instead of steady growth. 
I want I want my career to be like the fucking the rate that technology is advancing. Like every year we go by, it's like that much fucking faster and that much bigger. You know, like if that makes sense. Like it does. Yeah, we go fucking millions and millions of years without cell phones, and then all of a sudden we go from one that you are playing snake on to fucking uh, running an entire business from your phone within like twelve years. You know what I mean? Yes. And I want, I want the music career. I want my fucking music career path to be like that, where it's like, all right, nothing happening, nothing happening, nothing happening. Okay. Starting to get a little break. And then Holy fuck. What the fuck is this? You know? I mean, I I feel like you're already on that trajectory. That's fucking cool. (laughs) Cause who the fuck is Kyle Smith? A lot of people know. A lot of people don't. There's way more people that don't. And that's, that's yeah. I just pretend like nobody knows. Back to the British lady. I think that you need to request that everyone who sends it to you also sends her one of your songs. All right. Done. I think that's a fair trade. (laughs) Nobody will know what the fuck we're talking about by the time this video comes out. I swear to God. (laughs) It'll be some other shit. It'll be some other shit. It'll it'll be some other fucking big thing. Watch. Oh, but we like big things. (laughs) Speak for yourself. Jesus. All right. Give me the fuck out of here. I love you. <laughs> I love you. Thank you so much, Kyle. I will see you whenever I always find you. Yep. I will see you uh, somewhere around Southern California or anywhere over the next uh, six months. Oh, 420 Long Beach. I think you're going to be, be there. there. I love 420. Yeah. 420 in Long Beach with Gutter Mouth and uh, a bunch of bands. There's like so many fucking bands playing, but we're playing with Gutter Mouth and I'm really excited about it. I'm excited and nervous because whenever we play for real punk motherfuckers, they're like, what the fuck is this reggae bullshit? But that's okay because I'll jump in the pit and fucking go nuts if anybody has anything negative to say about our set. So (laughs) I'll be there. I will celebrate with you. And I fucking love you. Thank you. Love you too, Jesse Rules. All right. I'll talk to you soon. I hope you enjoyed it. I know that this one was a little bit longer than the rest of them, but I had the opportunity and it was amazing. It was amazing. Um, There is one thing that I know I was saying wrong. I kept saying my fifth episode or whatever I was, I was trying to make the connection from interviewing him now to interviewing him on my old podcast. He was the first musical artist we interviewed, and he was, I believe, episode five. And so my brain had this, like, wild connection, and I'm just so grateful. But really, the connection is anytime I'm starting and I'm like, hey, you want to have my back? He does, in fact, have my back. And that's fucking cool, and it's nice. And, you know, help your friends out because they'll help you out back. And thank you to the lady for being really mad about your parking lot because that helped my friend. There's a couple Kyle Smiths in the music scene. I got a dog named Kyle Schmidt. Thank you. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for the support. Um, The makeup. That is one thing. Okay. The bunny ears. The makeup. If you want to see this come together, it's on Patreon. I want to be putting a lot more things on Patreon. I am going to be doing a painting tier. I have not gotten a chance to start that yet. But I'm going to be doing how-to paintings. And I will also be doing recipes. So I'm going to have a recipes club. I'm going to have a painting club. I'm going to have the just regular you want to support, give your love one. And then there is the classic (laughs) armpit fart tier. So it's a good time on Patreon. There's a shit ton of bonus stuff, especially from this one already. Yeah, just follow me. I'm on TikTok. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. But like, They're not all consistent business pages. Facebook is mostly just personal and memes. TikTok is whatever TikTok allows. TikTok's fucking wild. TikTok likes nonsense. Instagram is mostly Instagram and Patreon. That's where you're going to find the business stuff for me. That's where you're going to find, like, you know, the honed in, focused, Jesse's rules kind of bullshit. And I'm still getting in the groove of a thing. I'm stoked for springtime. I just... There's a lot of cool, happy things happening. And there's, I mean, life's hard and there's a lot of fucked up shit happening. And so every happy little moment that you can grab, grab it. And any cool fucking conversation you can have, have it. Any hug you can give, hug it. That's Jesse's Rules today. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Kyle Smith. Thank you for the music. Thank you for the fun. Thank you for the adventures. Thank you for the love. I appreciate you. I will see you at all the shows that I see you at. 
you know I'll find you. I love you guys. And hopefully I will see some of you guys there. And hooray. Yes, and go to Patreon and all of my socials because you'll get to see cool-ass pictures. Hoo-hoo. Peace out.